Charlie and Maria Gersh had been toy inventors for over 25 years when they switched focus to the underlying creative mind, which produced the ideas that made it possible to put food on the table and pay for their growing kids' hockey lessons in orthodontia. This led to their co-authoring a definitive book, Fanning the Creative Spirit. and founding Creativity Central, where they developed a curriculum that became the basis for seminars and training around the world, working with Target, McMaster University, the Virginia Board for People with Disabilities, General Mills, and the like. An example workshop title is How to Get Your Butt Fired. I met with Charlie and Maria in their apartment overlooking downtown Denver where they moved after raising their six kids in St. Paul, Minnesota and watching them fly to the far corners of our country. Charlie's officiated at all their weddings so far. So how does somebody tap into their creative zone? In my opinion, whether it's meditation or uh, creativity or recovery or uh, improvisation or dialogue, the rules are essentially the same. Show up, be present, go with what you're given, trust some energy, higher power, God, you know, whatever it is, whether, you know, whatever the discipline is, and then go with it. People asked us for many years, what do you do to be and stay creative? Because all of those years that we were toy inventors, Ideas were our lifeblood. I mean, we depended on our marketably novel ideas. We decided we also need to be intentional okay, about our creativity. So we invented things that we call stretcher sizes. Little things you can do every day. Just we really, invented the name. We the invented things you the do, names. Yeah. everybody will tell you, they're good for the brain. Yeah. You know, take and a different route. Use your non-dominant hand. Be curious about stuff. You, you know, make up conversations. Have silly answers to serious questions, mm -hmm. you know. And there are ways of getting yourself into the habit of getting yourself out of the habit. Because autopilot is kind of a big enemy of creativity, of creative expression. I mean, we are all on autopilot. It's part of life. There's nothing wrong with it. And I think you do a good explanation of the, the brain physiology. I mean, this isn't just us being all, oh, let's just be all woo-woo and, and, you know, do these little stretcher sizes. I think we've learned so much about the, the dynamics of the the physical and the you know the nature of the way the brain kicks and sparks and and in the brain are are fistule like things and they call them dendrites and when the brain when you have to do new work these things open up and neurons flow and connections are made so you can actually grow your brain if you will and um, and so that's the concept behind the stretch exercises oversimplification but if if Anytime you're, tr you're doing something that is new behavior or changing a pattern of behavior, you know, there's new work going on. And I, I, I've even gotten, Maria laughs at me, but I even, when I set the alarm at night, I don't just turn it on anymore. I actually pick a time. I might add up the numbers that are on the clock at the time. I'm, like it was 10.05 last night when I set it, and I wanted to get up around, you know, a little after 5 because I had to get off to this thing this morning. So I added the 10 and the 5, and I set it for 5.15, you know. I, you know, I do change it every time, and I do try to, you know, I read the comics every in the, in the daily paper. I read them in a different order every day. You know, call me crazy. And sometimes we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you know, you're not allowed to do my, my, my yeah, inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your workshops, how, how do you get people to unwind? You've got to have some stodgy people. Most people say, oh my God, what are they going to make us do? What's, Bring out the what's, feathers. Exactly. So we start by saying, could we see a raise of hands? How many of you think you're creative? We created a test. It's the best. So, so we say to them, we have a no-fail creativity test that we're going to give to all of you right now. And we made up like a big name for it. I don't remember the Uniquery, blah, 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 you know, like all those tests and measurements. Inventory assessment type. And we say, if you do test not creative, we're going to ask you to leave for the rest of the session. You know, maybe go shop or go back to your office, get the emails done and stuff like that. So, I mean, you can see the kind of attention building. So then we show the slide and we go, okay, here is the test, the Uniquery one question test. So on the slide it says, were you ever a child? 
yes or no. And if you answered yes, you're a C. You know how those tests always give you a letter? You're creative. And if you answered no, you're an L, liar, because of course we were all children. And you can just see, that it's kind of fun, isn't it, to, yeah. to see this like, oh, maybe I am creative. Of course, we, we then talk more about it, but you know, we really, we really make a big thing of going back to the childhood, not to your childhood, not to go quit your job and go play in the sandbox, but to the characteristics you had as a child, to identify them, to remember them, and figure out how to make them work in your life right now. I mean, it's kind of magic. So what makes us fall off that little red radio flyer wagon? Uh, how, do, how do we lose our childhood inventiveness? I think we get trained away from it, so we get afraid of it. Because um, when you're five or six years old, you just have it. It's intuitive, it's, it's in your bones. And uh, then school and work and performance and all the educational stuff gets in the way. I guess from my experience, uh, there's just such a wonderful energy when you're creating. I mean, I woke up with a smile on my face this morning just thinking about, you know, I get to talk about this, you know, because it is, it's a, I think it's life-giving. And I happened to come across our 30th anniversary book uh, recently and notes that people had written. And one of the things that people note about us is our playfulness, you know, and I, I think I learned a lot of it from her because I come from the German <laughs> the, if you're not, you're not in pain, you're not gaining at all, you know. Neither Charlie nor Maria have any of the credentials you'd expect of professional toy inventors. Maria received her BA in French from Dominican University in Illinois. Charlie has a graduate degree in theology and worked at a Catholic parish on Chicago's South Side during the late 60s. Like Barack Obama, he became a community organizer and was deputy director of the St. Paul Urban Coalition before becoming a toy and game designer. Since the early 70s, Charlie and Maria invented and licensed over 200 marketably novel toys and games worldwide, winning many industry awards. In the mid-90s, they took a year off and studied creativity as an academic discipline. They not only wrote this remarkable book, but designed creativity a la carte, a deck full of sayings and doings to ignite the creative spark. During this respite, Maria earned a master's degree in human development, specializing in creativity and lifelong learning. Charlie was recruited to run the Institute of Creative Studies at the University of St. Thomas. But I think we have to keep bringing innovation and creativity be beyond the scope of business and industry, where of course it fits perfectly, but it fits we're more about making this stuff fit in our own lives. And if it's fitting in your own life, you know, you're going to bring it to your jobs, don't you think? Well, I think to your point, the, I think the, the creativity is the energy in here, and innovation is the, the, the output. Of it. You know, the, That's good. The, um, you like that? That's pretty good. <laughs> the, uh, you know, whether it's useful or not, I mean, it's, it, you know, now it's, it's come out of here, and here it is. It may not even be new. It may be a different combination. You know, Maria always gives the example of uh, clock radio. You know, nothing new here except that now they're married. When I think of the iPod, the iPod, there's nothing new there. I mean, it, it was MP3 music. It was downloading songs. Napster was ahead of that by 10 years, et cetera, et cetera. But they organized it in such a way that it was a slam dunk, you know. And, and we all had to do it and spend a whole lot more money doing it than we were doing previously, you know. But we, we paid for the privilege of that ease of access, you know, so. Who seeks you out? Uh, how do people find you? The whole world seeks <laughs> you. Know On a good day. Here, here's the deal, Wally. <laughs> Anybody, I mean, it's kind of funny that you ask that. Our, our topic, our domain that we feel, you know, like a certain expertise in is creativity and innovation. Now, what company, what nonprofit doesn't want to be more creative? The thing we thought we would do all the time would be facilitating the brainstorming because we're inventors and we know how to invent and we know how to get people thinking inventively and uh, it's probably the least requested thing of us. And when we do it, no matter how good, bad, or different, uh, they create the answers. We just facilitate the energy, you know, and, and the focus. 
we've done it very successfully in some really large organizations, and I would say very few. You know, even when you have a really successful uh, event and come up with really good solutions, it it may never be applied because there's it's the old 90% effort that you know it's easy. You know, even we make it so easy that lots of ideas flow, but there's still that part that you got to get down, roll up your sleeves, get down on your hands and knees, and just nudge it through the program, the process. And many of these organizations are like freight trains; you just can't turn them around. They're you know, they just, they're so burdensome. One of the professors I had said a quote that I still, it just really resounds with me, is that when we, we, when we create, we image the God of Genesis, who is a creator God. So when you're creating, you're using a God-like power, you know, and I think that's, you know, go back to the energy part of it. I mean, there's just so much uh, oomph to that.